As we acknowledge the land this morning, let's begin just by grounding ourselves wherever we are. I invite you to pause for a moment, maybe close your eyes and take a breath. Feel your body. We can feel the aliveness in our body. And then shifting our attention from how our bodies feel on this land, we can notice the land itself. We can notice how it's supporting us. We recognize this land has been home to many indigenous peoples for thousands of years before European settlers came and drastically altered their lives and the life of the land. We are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. We've been reflecting recently on some of the ways we perpetuate racism here in Canada. Still today, many Indigenous people do not even have access to clean water. This racism extends to many in Canada. And those of us born into privilege have a responsibility to educate ourselves and to become actively anti-racist. This light of Christ is a fierce beacon of peace. And Jesus calls us to stand in solidarity with the oppressed. May this light stoke the spirit fire within us, the spark in our hearts growing into flicker and flame. And may this remind us of our responsibility to an active and engaged peace, calling us to be vocal in spaces where it is not being equally shared. And our memorial lights burn. They remind us of the cloud of witnesses that is with us. And this morning, you may be holding in your heart someone who has taught you about welcome. We light these lights in honor of those gone before, but this morning they also burn for the voices that we have listened to and those we have not, and the call to do better. We do that in the spirit of more than welcome. We're grateful that in that work, we hear Jesus saying to us, come unto me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. That peace informs our worship and calls us into time of praise on this morning. Let mortals to obey. 
Summer is here, and the Spirit is present to us as we are followers in the way of Jesus, part of this community, and we're grateful that you're joining us from wherever you are, because we are a community that doesn't love the same or think the same or vote the same, but we look for the gifts of the Spirit in each other. We're taking a journey this summer to explore how those gifts are showing up and being used for the mending of the world. We ask this morning that the spirit of life be with us as we discern together and listen well.
listen to the word of Scripture from chapter 8 of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, entitled Life in the Spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But is, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. The spirit of God dwells in you. One of my favorite simple songs is the spirit in me greets the spirit in you. Hallelujah. God's in us and we're in God. Hallelujah. That sense that the Spirit of God dwells in us and when we meet or are connected, that that Spirit greets one another. The Holy Spirit has been a promise of God to you, to us, since the time of the writings of the prophet Joel in the Hebrew Scriptures. When Joel proclaimed, I will pour out my Spirit on all your sons and daughters, and they shall prophesy. Your old ones shall dream dreams, and your young ones shall see visions. The Spirit is at work in us. Let us pray. God, we pause. Some might say that in this time we've been part of a great pause. And in this season, we turn our hearts towards the guidance of the Holy Spirit, towards the gifts that have been placed to dwell within us. And we ask that as we pause this morning and center our hearts on you, that between the words that are said and the words that are heard, may your good news be heard and known. Amen. It's important in our spiritual journey to be in touch with the work of God's Spirit within us. To live by the Spirit is to open ourselves to God's work in our lives. This sacred presence empowers us to live in harmony with ourselves and at peace with the world. When we live in Spirit-centered ways, we become gifts to our family and friends. We are a sign of hope to all we come in contact with. But when we lose touch with God's spiritual work and ways in our life, we can feel distant from ourselves and even become a block to others knowing God's love. There are moments through this pandemic time where I have felt distant from myself. 
where I have yearned to be clear about what the Spirit wants from me in this day or the next and have been invited back to just this moment. And the things that I knew before, the gifts that I had, the strengths that I leaned on, well, they're used differently in this time. And many of us are put on different footing because we're not so sure what to rely on. Because the strengths and gifts that we knew and used regularly may not be essential or may not be what's required of us in this time. And so we turn to our scriptures to see how Christ responds in uncertain times. Because Jesus acted through the guidance and empowerment of the Holy Spirit, not alone. And so can each of us. And just as the Holy Spirit led the first disciples through the events of Pentecost and into the first struggling days of the church's history, so we are led and strengthened. The Holy Spirit equips us and empowers us for the work of ministry within Christian community, never alone. And so we listen to the wisdom that each one of us has been given gifts. It's not like a pie where we can see that maybe others have many pieces of pie and only one for us. There are gifts enough for everyone. And we each have a particular gift as a unique child of God, not to compare what gift we have to others, because in the community of faith, they are all valuable. And we use our spiritual gifts in the work of justice and peace and reconciliation. And in using our gifts, it also gives us a depth of joy and peace. But how do we know what a gift of the Holy Spirit is? We may have heard it read before we hear Paul talk about it in Scripture. It's a grace gift. It's not something we can earn or attain. It's given by God. And it's empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's used for the whole Christian community, not just those in our circle or not just for ourselves. And we use these gifts for the healing of all God's creation. And you may wonder how you know if you're using your gift. When we live in God's way, we become aware of the gifts that have been given. And when we live in God's way and pay attention to the Spirit, we know what to put first in our lives. When we live in God's way, we are also free to say no and to say yes. We get clarity. When we live in God's way, we say no and yes to things that don't burn us out, to things that give us fire. When we live in God's way, the sense of who we are is at peace, that we're unique and loved and known by God. I know when I'm not using my gifts, when I'm saying yes to too many things that stretch me beyond what I'm called to do. You've experienced the joy of working hard at something that was right and working hard at things that felt tiring, or that they were for someone else to do because that was their gift. There's an invitation this summer for us to explore what we should say yes to, and what we can say no to. Paul writes in different letters about the gifts of the Spirit. They can be categorized into kind of three different groups. The gifts of word, of sharing the good news, the gifts of apostleship and prophecy, evangelism and pastoring, of teaching and encouragement, of knowledge and of wisdom. And then there are the gifts of deed, the gift of helps, the gift of giving, of leadership, of compassion, of faith. And lastly, 
In our tradition, there are some gifts we don't often talk about. And yet they are the signs of how God may be acting or speaking. Gifts of discernment, of miracles, of healing. The gift of praying in tongues and the interpretation of those prayers. When you hear these gifts proclaimed, there are gifts that will resonate with you. Gifts that you may feel you come to naturally or have learned as part of a community. We're going to explore the gifts of word and deed this summer. And there will be room for you to learn more about these signs. But I invite you to pray into the invitation to get to know yourself and your gifts a little more deeply this summer. You are invited to go on an exploration with us as a community of faith, individually and in relationship with each other. And there will be a moment near the end of the summer where it may feel clearer when you have explored sometimes naming what you've learned and known helps you to embrace that gift and share it with the world. God gives gifts to everyone, and God distributes the gifts according to God's grace. And God promises that the Holy Spirit will be our comforter and our guide on the journey. Now, a spiritual gift is not necessarily the same as a role or work of ministry. A gift is a specific calling on our lives, and how we live that out in our calling is seen in the roles and work we undertake, what we say yes to, what's needed of us. You may not have the gift of giving, but as a member of Christ's church, you are called to give as a practice of being part of this community. A person with the gift of giving places a high priority of, on giving in their whole life. They may receive energy and spend time offering gifts of money, raising money, and sharing that, distributing it for the mending of the world. That comes naturally in the people who have been given this gift. Those of us without that gift may incorporate the practice of giving into our lives as one of the many ways that we serve God and live out our Christian discipleship. There's a difference between exploring the gift and claiming that gift as the thing that brings you joy and peace. And sometimes it's exploring the ones that don't that help us pay attention to the gift that we have. And let's talk about gifts and talents and abilities because a gift is not a natural or acquired talent or ability. Some of us have worked hard on special skills or have acquired them, been born into places that let us explore certain gifts. We all have talents and abilities and skills that we've acquired through practice or that seem to come easily. But when we connect them to being given to us by God, it takes on a different sense of spirit. It's not just within our Christian tradition. We have learned about it through the people of faith who've come before. But we believe that the Holy Spirit is at work before and during a person's life and after. And that each person we meet is of sacred worth. And we need to remember that God is already at work in the people we encounter. Islington has a history of exploring spiritual gifts in workshops, and many people in our church family have explored their gifts. I can't think of a better time for this to happen again. And there are many resources out there that I'll share with you later, but this work is for all of us. And it's a time, especially in the summer, the quiet of a hot day, in the early morning or a late evening, where we can reflect back on our life's events and pay attention to where joy and peace have shown up in what we've offered to the world. We can see 
how the gifts that have been given have unfolded in our lives and pay attention in ways to the ones that we have ignored. For this work is mutual. It's us working with God and checking it with people that we trust around us, having conversation about the gifts that others see in us and we see in those around us. It's about mutual interdependency. It's us being the body of Christ. The congregation grows when the body of Christ loves and cares for each other. The congregation makes room for people to thrive when they can say yes to what they're called to and say no to the things that aren't their gifts. Part of the body of Christ, when it works as it should, we are stronger and we can agree to disagree and we live in this Christian unity that isn't us being all on the same page but celebrating the gifts of each other. So this summer, I hope that there'll be a chance for us to take our place in the body of Christ, recognizing that the gifts have gone before. And this table, well, it's an invitation to us to be part of that body of Christ. The Lord be with us. We lift up our hearts to God. We give God thanks and praise. And it is right to give God thanks and praise. And from this place of praise, we pause, recognizing we're part of creation, that we've been given gifts that allow us to be co-creators with God and invited to the work of the mending of our world. And this meal is a gift, an invitation to taste and see, to meet the one who they named blessed. And we remember that he would gather on nights with his friends. And on the last time that he was with them, they were at table. He took bread. He blessed it. And he broke it as he had so many times before. And he shared it. He said, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat this, remember me. And then he took a cup, he poured it, he blessed it, he shared it, he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. This is the cup of blessing poured out for you. Every time you drink it, remember me. And in the sharing of these signs, we honor that Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. And we recognize his presence in the gifts of the Spirit. You know them as love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits that come from living out our gifts. And so we give thanks to the Spirit of life who's in these elements, in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the wine, Oh God, may your spirit be present to us. May we be empowered for the work of your love and grace shared in the world. Amen. And so we come to this table. Not the table of Islington United Church. Not the table of the United Church of Canada. This is the table of Jesus Christ. Where all are welcomed and no one is turned away. And so, I invite you to share this bread where you are, to drink of this cup, to taste and see that God is good. Sweetness. 
I invite you to join me now as we pray together. Oh God, as we prepare to move from worship into the day ahead, into the week ahead, and into the month ahead, we thank you for the many ways you have gifted us to serve in the healing and the reconciliation of your creation. We thank you for continuing to pour out your spirit upon us, God. Set our minds on your spirit that we might serve life and peace. Tend to the light of your spirit within us. Kindle our hearts from spark to flicker and from flicker to flame. And as we feel gratitude for your gifts, God, may we watch in awe as they grow. 
working wonders through our lives in simple and stunning ways. Help us to remain attentive, open to discovery and recognizing your gifts at work in others just as they are in us. May we be inspired and empowered by the ways people use your gifts for righteousness in mending the world. Open us to your will, God. Open our ears that we may hear what you are saying to us in the things that happen and in those we encounter. Open our eyes that we may see the needs of the people around us. Open our hands that we may do our work well and help when help is needed. Open our lips that we may share your good news, bringing words to comfort those in need and words to confront those abusing power. Open our minds that we may discover new truth about you and the world. And open our hearts that we may love you and others as you have loved us. And we thank you, God, for sustaining the light of our souls. Strengthen us to realize our role as co-creator, allowing our many gifts to express themselves through us as one spirit, your spirit, the spirit of life, of truth, of justice. And following this spirit in the way of Christ, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's such a gift to be invited into the generosity, into actions of sharing. And I thank you to all those who are supporting this ministry through gifts to the Mission and Service Fund, but also this summer through putting your virtual offering in the offering plate on our website or dropping off checks or mailing them to continue the possibilities for how we can be Christ's hands and feet in the world. We are grateful. And you can even e-transfer right now to office at islingtonunited.org and it'll go automatically into this ministry support. Thank you for being part of that work. And join us. If you're here in person, we would head out to Stuart East Hall, but I invite you to join us on the website. Just scroll down a little bit for our Facebook Live time of passing the peace and sharing the news of our community. And our first ever Islington Reads book club will be on Tuesday. So if you haven't read the book, Let Me Be Like Water yet, now's your chance to do that and join us. There's more information on our website and also be part of the continued conversation of how we at Islington can be part of the work of anti-racism. Join James on Thursday at one o'clock online. There is much for you to be part of, and we are in this together. We do this work, grateful for the ways God calls us out into the world. Our community ministry focuses on transformational justice by affirming the worth of individuals, empowering communities, and seeking social justice. We've been offering support in the community for over 60 years as an organization and have grown from one program that started in the basement of United Church to now having over 30 different programs. Poverty is not being in partnership or not being in communion with the other. And when I asked one of our indigenous brothers and what it meant to be poor. They meant being poor meant a lack of kinship. Any transformational spiritual moment or a moment of grace, you can't predict when that happens. 
It could be because it was your 30th bowl of soup for breakfast, or it could be because uh, you got your income stable, and um, it could be that you had a place to sleep while you were working but not earning enough to find an apartment and you had a safe place to keep your things while you were at work until you could find a new apartment. And that's one of the reasons why um, we have such a broad spectrum of programs that we offer because there's no one magical thing or moment or program that works for everybody. Being a sober parent is a big step for me. Like I've been sober before but not this long to be a parent. When I use my tools from talking to people that understand and that can give me good honest advice back and it's usually here at work outreach the minister my boss um, people up in the admin it just gives me that strength that it's okay i'm not alone my experience here has been uh, a positive one i've been coming here for 11 years um, i mostly come for the meal program they've helped me with mental health issues finding suitable housing uh, it's been nothing but a positive experience by giving back to the community sometimes, you know, they give back to us also. It's all about lots of love. The love here, honestly, it's crazy. It's really crazy. When you come here, the door is open. I like it because it's friendly. Well, I was a single parent and had my son home alone. I was on a fixed income. I needed somewhere to take him where he could interact with other children. It um, helps the uh, people who actually need help. For me, it was just a sense of community. It was just nice. We do drumming and pray together and read the gospel and offer smudging and traditional medicines to everyone in the room. We do community ministry because Jesus told us, feed my sheep, take care of my people. Your gifts to the mission and service of the United Church of Canada help make programs like these possible. Thank you, and please continue to give.
The light of Christ never goes out. It's only changed as we are changed. And this light, will you take it with you? For we go from this place, surrounded by the unconditional love of God and following the call of Christ, empowered by the Spirit, Go in peace.